Welcome back or welcome if this is your first time visiting. My name is Tina Hurley. I'm the founder and CEO of Less Leg More Heart. We're a 501c3 charity that helps amputees with support supplies and services to improve their quality of life. This platform, we bring in awesome guests with inspiration or perspective for you or vetted goods and services. Today we have a really fun segment. I know you're going to stay for the entire time. Joined with me today is Anthony Capaletti and San Schaefer. I thank you guys so much for being here today. Thanks for having us. You're yeah, from New York. You're from the middle of the country. Yeah, St. Louis. Just so out, you just guys, outside, yeah. Yeah, so you guys came all the way here just to have this today? Yeah. That's it. Well, or maybe a like four days of fun, yeah. Um, I, got, I, I got invited for a little bit more. I'm so excited. These guys are like incredible humans. Anthony is a new father. He's a uh, peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser for our campaign that gives levit levitate blades to uh, amputees around the country. And he also runs a podcast and has a big social media presence. You can cap uh, check him out, Anthony Capaletti, on social media. And Sam Schaefer, he is an Air Force veteran. He's an amputee and a big wellness geek, I guess I could say, right? I typically would go to nerd. Okay, nerd. Nerd is <laughs> no, ner ner right? Nerd's more like the word that rolls off of my tongue, but we'll, we'll send it. They rule the world. So anyway, you want to check him out. It's Sam Schaefer, right? Yes, ma'am. On uh, social media. These guys are awesome to follow. And uh, you know where to find us, lesslegmoreheart.com. You can link to all of our social channels from there. Today's episode is going to be amputee answers. And what I'm going to do is bring some questions to the forum here. And everybody here, all of us amputees, you know, there's three people here, but three legs. That's pretty interesting. We're going to actually answer some questions that have been pre-formulated by a group of folks that may or may not just be in this room off camera. And we're going to tell you what our experience is. A lot of you have probably thought of these questions and wanted answers. Maybe you feel uncomfortable asking them, or maybe they feel a little taboo. Hopefully, we'll debunk some myths and bring some light to uh, these topics for you. So. Without further ado, you guys ready? Who wants Let's to go get it first? Started. Let's play Ask an I'll Amputee. I'll rip one. All right. Let's play Ask an Amputee. Ask, ask an, amputee. an Amputee. All right. First question Have you ever fallen? Hell yeah. Like every day. Uh, yesterday, okay, actually, in fact. I watched it. Yeah. <laughs> and instead <laughs> of asking whether I was okay, he just looked down and went, She's a good faller. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's a specific fall to, that I've learned with people with disabilities that have had them for a while. Is, They've, they've learned when their balance point has, it's gone. It's no longer recoverable. You see like the I'm slow going down. tip. It's yeah. like in slow motion. <laughs> and like someone who doesn't understand is like, why don't you just like not fall? <laughs> it's like, you know, you don't understand. This yeah. is the best I can. Because if I do try to recover mid position, I'm going to hurt an ankle. I'm going to break a wrist. You're going to fall faster. Yeah. And I'm, or I'm going to take something else out. Yep. So yes, I fall a lot actually. I fall all the time. Just yeah. thank God I haven't fallen in the shower. You also fall in love, like with new babies oh, that you make and stuff, right? That's true. That's right. I did just fall in love with my baby girl. Aww. Oh, I wish I was with her right now. <laughs> and you fall? Um, not as much. Usually you got, it's playing hockey. Okay, because you got like tree trunks for legs. So yeah, it's usually play. I, if I fall, it's because I'm getting checked or something. Okay. All right. So two yeses and one eh, sometimes. All less, right. Less frequent. You're up. All right. All right. What do you do at the beach to get around? I'll go ahead and start with this one. As a native of St. Louis, Missouri, right outside the Mississippi River, there is no beach. To get <laughs> <laughs> there, there is no beach to get around. And I am the, out of the three people up here, I'm the fourth person to ask this question. <laughs> so not applicable. What do you got, Anthony? I don't go to the beach. I just hate it with my life. Okay. It's the well, one thing that I just will avoid now because of this, which is fine because like I used to go to the beach once a year. I prefer lakes anyway. Okay. But actually being an amputee on the beach for me is like a nightmare experience. Well, speaking from a lot of experience, because I'm a beach bird, uh, it is a nightmare. And so when I was first an amputee, I had a big wound vac. I had like my lower extremity wasn't healed for several months and I missed it. So I actually put a pediatric hand splint cast cover over my wound vac on my amputated limb. And I have a photo of it. I like one leg, um, like that crawl thing, like the crab crawl, out to the water with my leg erect up in the sun, oh and God. then oh just God. dip back in the water, and I'm like, ah, right? That's and then I had to be commitment. carried back from there up to the top. I evolved from that to having a prosthetic, which is cool, but anyone that knows an amputee or those that are amputees, you know that the, you have like, you have your residual limb, you've got a liner that's very sort of like adhesive almost. It increases circumferential friction around the leg so that it holds you into the socket with some other methods. But it's also super tacky and sticky. Mm. And so you cannot get to the beach and not get sand, as you know, everywhere. Especially in cracks sand. and crevices, which this has a lot of. And it will like irritate your skin. I did it once and I had terrible folliculitis and a rash oh. that I couldn't be in my leg for a week. Um, so that I've, is about worst case scenario for an amputee. It's something that happens to the skin. Yeah. 
because it's about the worst healing environment on Earth. And, yeah. and then let alone, you have unstable ground, and it's not like forgiving unstable ground, like packed gravel. It's like it moves as you move, yeah. and you know we've got a great lot of falling. yeah, a lot of great tech, mm -hmm. and it's not that bad to fall on, thankfully. But then you get the sand everywhere. But a lot of our technology is either not super friendly to have that kind of like sand or yeah, there's no water return in it, on your yeah, foot. Yeah. and there's no return on your foot because you push and the sand moves. Um, so it's just kind of there's so many challenges. I remember one time I was using. Um, press and seal plastic wrap mm -hmm. around the entire foot and ankle, then a sock and then duct tape around it just so that I could like walk through the short, shallow part of the water with mm -hmm. my son who's now two, just to try to like get that mm -hmm. feeling. You want right. to have those experiences, but I'll tell you it's a nightmare and I largely avoid it now, which is a big bummer, but we have some solutions to that on some future episodes you should stay tuned to, so. I will tell you this one time we were at the beach. I was in Atlantic City, had a couple beers with my buddies and we, dragged me into the water, mm -hmm. right? I had my two buddies drag me in. And then when they were dragging Wings me Wings of a dragon, out, they say, yeah. Wings <laughs> of a dragon, yeah, yeah, we'll call it that. Them that. Uh, when they were pulling me out, we had a little bit of fun. And maybe we shouldn't have done it, but we were like, oh, I got bit by a shark. We got a couple people to freak out. But then we were like, all right, we're just kidding, we're just kidding. I've only ever been able to pull that off one time with a straight face when people ask. Because, you know, it gets boring. You'd be like, my story is not sexy. I have bad blood vessels, womp womp. So, like, I'll try to do, like, I've made silly things. Like, I have swine flu. I was skydiving and a pig flew through my leg. And they're so <laughs> shocked by, like, I have no leg what? that they go, oh, my goodness. Oh, my God. Uh, I love that. Isn't that pretty this, good? This yeah. sounds like swine the type of stuff flu. we used to tell people, like, whenever I was active duty, I had a job that you didn't really want to explain a whole lot. It was a special operations right. job with the boot. So there's really only so many details you're supposed to like tell. So it just became like, what ridiculous thing can mm -hmm. we tell people about this? With a straight face. Like and it's, it's yeah, yeah, and that's like the game. Yeah. And that, we did it one time. Alligator bite I got through as well. And then, uh, I forget, I think I said I got a pedicure where they do those little fish that are now illegal, and they're illegal for a reason. Oh, my. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. So we should do a segment on that. That seems like a fun one. Illegal fish? Yeah. Illegal fish. <laughs> <laughs> that's how I made them give me half off on the pedicure. Hey, I get them all the time. They actually right. Do they give you half off? I really do. I won't get it unless I get the half oh, off. Oh, let's go. And sometimes they'll give me an extra $5 charge because they still have to, like, clean up the sink yeah, and do extra yeah, I've, things. Yeah, I've heard it's, like, 30 to 50%. Uh, I, get 50, I get 50 plus 5, whatever that ends up being, but uh, one time they tried to charge me full price and I actually left. I said, unless you're going to yeah. massage my socket, I'm out. And I did. <laughs> I boycotted it. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not terrible enough to mention the place, but if you have one leg, you get a discount. That's right. What was the hardest part or biggest learning lesson of, coming, of becoming an amputee? The, oh, man. The hardest part or biggest learning lesson. I said it yesterday, probably radical acceptance. You know, in the beginning of being an amputee, you know, I'm a, I was a young female, um, and aesthetically, you know, I had concerns. I didn't have a ton of scars at that time. I was a perfectionist-seeking young gymnast, and um, to accept that I was disabled, that I was visibly handicapped, that I was going to get society's pity and be treated broken by almost every person that I came into contact with, and that most people were going to look at me with eyes like this, instead of what I had gotten my whole life as an accomplished athlete and physician assistant, was really, really humbling and really hard to tolerate. I remember going to, you know, in the beginning I was on pain meds and I had this awful complication, blah, 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 it's a mess. but. Um, I remember standing, I had side stick crutches, and I had my s residual limb over the handle of one just because there was three people deep at the pharmacy. And I'm oh, just, so you pull this move too? Oh, yeah. It's a power stance. I do speaking that way. It's like, <coughs> nice. yeah, it's nice. It's comfy. It's comfy. But I'm standing there, and I remember this woman came over, and she got like way into my personal bubble, and she goes, what happened to you? Oh, it's the tone. With her face. Oh. And I'm like... I'm not at a place where this can be an educational opportunity, and I'm recognizing in the way that it's being asked that that's actually not what's happening. This person wants to pacify their curiosity more than they're interested actually in the story and actually about like my comfort. So figuring out how to protect my emotional boundaries and also try to educate the community to not be so awkward, it was never malintended, but it was just so hard to juggle, like my needs versus mm -hmm. the needs of the other people looking at me. Being told I'm inspirational while I'm grocery shopping. like. It, it, there were a lot of hard things. So I would say acceptance of just what this norm is. What do you guys got? Yeah. What do you got? You ready? Um, I don't know about my answer. So, <laughs> so yeah, like, so I kind of came, I came into this yeah. life kind of the, the opposite direction. So I'm, a, I'm an elective amputee. So, like, I, I chose my amputation. I decided that this is what I wanted. Um, this was my, I, w I, w I would love to use the term best opportunity to move forward but that, to the honest answer is it was my only opportunity to move forward 
I'd gotten through a lot of that sort of stuff. Um, so the treatment of others, like the, my first few experiences of being treated as different slash less were really challenging. Mm. Like, oh, I've never had that experience right. before. You know, um, the first time I did a competition, I got put in a group of 50 plus year old. And I was like, what is going on here? Why, like, they knew me from before, the whole nine, and I was just like, why am I in this in this group? Oh, sh and like, that was a really tough one to swallow. Um, like, that, that was really challenging to just be simply treated that way for an aesthetic reason. Mm -hmm. And I had never been treated as a white male, right. never been treated as anything on my aesthetics. Mm -hmm. um, and then after that, it was learning to put a shoe on. Yeah, that's so <laughs> hard. The same shoe I do my Skechers slip I, I would wear the same <laughs> shoe for weeks when I first got it because I'm like, this ain't coming off. Yeah, I This took it. three hours and I used all my curse words twice. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, it was actually really a huge struggle to, find, to learn the actual pressure and skill of putting it. You don't understand what ankle extension does for yeah, you. Yeah, or even just like what one eighth of an inch of difference between the heel and toe height mm -hmm. in terms of what it does for your yes. tibial shaft and your gait pattern. I mean, there's so much to it. Yes. Yeah, that's a great, great answer. Uh, so mine's a little different. So biggest learning or hardest part, I'm not really going to speak to that, but the biggest learning lesson of becoming an amputee for me is that nothing will slow me down but death. I'm not going to let anything slow me down. That's right. I have it challenged me to overcome little things and now overcoming things has become a habit of mine and nothing's going to slow me down. There's that's a really a, good quote that I'm speaks to that. By time. That's it. Only when you're repeatedly exposed to annihilation is that which is indestructible found within you. Mm. Love that. That, that was, was hard. Like, yeah, that was a bar. Yeah, she just like pulled out like, Ooh. just pulled out a sword and just swung it hard. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome. Did your partner have a hard time accepting your limb? So we just spoke about this on my last podcast, actually. Um, I actually met my fiance after my accident. And I always ask her, like, as a joke, I'm like, what's wrong with you? Like, you hit on the guy at the gym with one leg? Like, I like the teaser. Uh, but no, it, it, you know, I think a lot of people think you're going to be judged. And I, I guess sometimes you guys feel like you are. But I just don't, I, I don't know. I don't see it that way. I don't feel like I'm judged for it. And I don't think people look at me so differently. It just doesn't matter. Yeah, I don't let it. Like, I, me, I don't put no any thought into it, really. Uh, but no, no, no one in my family or anyone who I have a relationship that I care for uh, had any issue accepting what happened to me. Yeah, uh, my wife was on board. My, we were married before my amputation, and my wife came in at probably the worst time to ever meet Sam. Um, to this day, I, I know she loves me. I do not know why. She, I, I don't like. There was. I, I couldn't come up with a reason on why she would stick around. Like I, mean, I, I, I couldn't have answered that. But not at the time, man. Like, like you know, like again, this is a this is a new version of me. Like, and so she was. So in terms of like accepting like the amputation, no, she was she was right on board. Um, I was about to use one of the words we weren't supposed to. It, <laughs> it, it, was, it was a heck yes moment. Like, of course we're gonna do this, and we accept the outcome, whether it works or not, because my amputation was not a guarantee. Um, that's part of where I got so much resistance from the medical from the medical side of things is it was a chance. It wasn't a, 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 a for sure solved mm -hmm. issue. Um, but no, my wife was she was a one from day one. Um, oh, that's she, nice. she, she was all the way. Anyone taking notes on some of yeah, these great sayings? Yeah, everyone's got bars right now. What's going on here? I will tell you that I my experience... Of, I listened to a lot of hip-hop as a kid. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> Anonymous, uh, my experience is different, and I'll skip some of the details, but uh, I was married. And I was taking limbs off for a living as a PA. And so like nine to five, Monday through Friday, plus call, I had to pretend that wasn't my fate. I knew it was semi-elective. I knew for six months I was gonna have my limb amputated and I was doing amputations. And so I had to like really disassociate from myself, from my future, from my reality. Like I said, the folks that I was turning into amputees were demographics that like, essentially you're putting your nails in your coffin. I was mm. like terrified. I was a gymnast my whole life. I was a CrossFitter. Like mm. I identified by the things I could do. And this was a, de a death sentence. And you know, that's all you understood at the time. Exactly, exactly. Um, and so I had a really hard time with my grieving and I didn't get the help I probably needed. Clinicians are the worst patients, you know? The yes. people I would have gone to were my associates and I didn't want to 
reveal that I was weaker or you know broken or all these things um, and so I suffered and the way that that came out was in all of the stages of grieving like anger and bargaining and all that mm. stuff and you take it out on your trusted counsel right like yep. you know your, your dearest people the people that you know you're safe with and should have gotten help probably sooner than I did and for people that are experiencing that I really encourage it because it can do irreparable damage to your relationships but as a result of not only the 13 surgeries in three years that I had had and the resultant effects of that on me mentally um, and the lack of education on my life as an amputee for myself and also my husband we didn't you know we met gas mask jump roping in a CrossFit gym and then six months later, I couldn't walk. So it was like the biggest bait and switch. So anyway, we, um, he left and, um, you know, I had dated, it's been, God, seven years now. So I've dated, you know, a few times here and there. Wade, cover your ears. Um, and there's been various but responses. No one like you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've had a couple of people that have been um, thrown off by it mm -hmm. because they question, largely what I've inferred is that they question your capacity to participate in the activities of life in a meaningful way to them. They don't understand what they don't Potential, understand. Potential, right, exactly. How are you gonna hike with me? How are we gonna go dancing? How are you gonna do this thing, do that thing? And I felt like I would have to defend myself to the point where I'm like, I'm just not And maybe this. mine wasn't That's about strange. amputation, but like, so I went through nine years of chronic pain and mm -hmm. something that doesn't get talked about is when you deal with that for a long time, People don't understand it. It was invisible. Yeah. I mean, I had doctors that flat out said, I think you're faking. I don't think, or I had a doctor who goes, well, I personally don't believe CRPS is real. This is like metal. Like, yeah, no, I get it. Remember we related? I said, yeah. one guy told me when this test is um, normal, we no more surgeries for you. for you. So it's like, <laughs> because so like, know. so I'm walking around with that and that affects you a lot. And yeah. I'm in like intense pain on a regular basis. I am. I am seeing hospital level pain, but there's no point in going because they're just going to pump me full of opiates. Mm. That impacts how you interact and people in turn don't treat you well because of that. Mm. So you get treated very poorly. Mm. Um, and so that was really my big, you know, equivalency to that. It was actually before my amputation because nobody could see it. Yeah. Invisible um, injuries are, are really And hard. it was this, we're going to bring it back to music. Uh, the artist Kid Cudi's got a, got a lyric at the end of his, one of his songs, it's called Ghost. And it's, I hope they understand that I really understand that they don't understand. Ooh. And that when I really latched onto that and really paid attention to what those lyrics meant, what they were, and like what that, they, mm -hmm. those words actually, like the power of that, like that was my reconciliation of that. Mm -hmm. um, that was a really challenging hurdle to get over. Especially as I started to feel better, I'm like, I got all these people that, like, you guys just treated me like, another word I'm not going to say. You got, <laughs> I just got treated so poorly, it's like, and now everybody's all in my corner. I'm like, no, the, no, this is the good part. Like, you, you guys are just hopping back in on the good part, and there was a lot of that. So, and I think that's what we talked about, too, to is reconcile. The, the concept of radical acceptance. Mm -hmm. And the acceptance can be literally of the ignorance and the misconduct and well, the it's, miseducation it's just of people. It's like you said, it's not malicious. No. It's, it's not malicious, right. but it's still horrible at times. And you just have to understand that they don't actually understand and there's nothing I can do to really to get that. Gosh. So, man, I, th this stuff is, I'm so glad we're doing this segment. All right. Can you care for children as an amputee? What's the hardest part? Uh, I can speak to that. Absolutely. I'm the best diaper changer on the eastern seaboard right now. I was about to say, um, about to get a challenge. I have not let this affect my ability as a new father at all. Like, I just had my daughter, uh, how many days has it been? Five. Five, yeah, five days ago. Five days. And no, it hasn't affected me whatsoever. Um, you just got to not take chances and lift her up with when you don't have your leg on or something to keep yep. you up. But no, and I never had any fear that it would slow me down or affect my... Uh, ability to be a good parent. Have you felt any change in maybe risk aversion? Uh, like now that she is physically here, it's like something you may be like, oh, you know what, I'm going to take the extra second, lock that in. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I definitely do that. Yep. Like I said, like, you know, for myself, I mm -hmm. would, middle of the night, if I need something, I'll hop up on one leg and go do stuff. But mm -hmm. I'm not going to even do that with her in the house because, mm -hmm. God forbid, I fall and hit her. Or, wake or her get up. hurt. And or wake, wake her or up. Or just <laughs> simply wake her up. <laughs> oh, no. You don't mess up the sleep She's schedule. already being Amen. thoroughly trained to, to sleep through loud noises. That is. That's, for now. That's going on. Mm -hmm. our, yeah, well, I hope it sticks. I've been um, a two-year-old, and uh, I did it alone for uh, a year and a half, and 
the biggest part for me because of my impairment, I can't keep my leg on like this. Mm -hmm. So I would be, you know, breastfeeding or rocking him to sleep. And then I would have to like, while you don't move and you can't breathe because they're sleeping, you gotta get them to their crib and be quiet. I would have to like get my leg, figure out how to get the angle, stand oh. up in it, get him over to the crib and then get him in. And then, you know, sometimes it would squeak or whatever mm -hmm. because I didn't have it locked in. And then like he'd wake up because it squeaked and then it's back to square one. And, you gotta see the sleeper um, leg I've got. Yeah, I should, but it was, uh, logistically it was a challenge. It's all about strategizing how to work around or with kind of your impairment. And I had to do a lot of that. You know, where is the table gonna go? Because when I have the breastfeeding pillow and I'm feeding him and my leg is off, how, while he's sleeping in dead weight, am I gonna be able to get him, get me, get the leg, get it on, and then get up? So I had to like strategically map mm -hmm. kind of where every ex every piece of furniture was gonna be. So this is kinda like what I discussed it, uh, when I went to do jujitsu last night with your brother. It's like, I'm solving the same puzzle with a different set of tools. Okay. It's really all it is. Right. Is it's, this, the puzzle remains the same. This is why I will regularly say like, how do you feel about your amputation? It doesn't matter. Or how do you feel about being an amputee? It doesn't matter. The, the, the problem to solve is still the same. It's unaffected by my disability. Mm. It's the strategy in which I have to implement that, in that problem solving process that, that changes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the, the no, way not, you're doing not, it. Not whether or not. The it way can you're happen. doing it is I'm just going to try to navigate through my day in the least painful way possible, yep. you know, with the best outcome I can. Mm -hmm. And like, that's a really, Sam is like, I feel like you should have been a monk. You know, just like the way you say things is it's just the like. It's beads. Yes, so this is why we couldn't take this out. <laughs> <laughs> it's the beads. You guys hear Mike interference, it's because he has his wisdom beads. Uh, <laughs> Fur Daddy, do you have anything to say? Anything oh, for a bit? Uh, you're a fur oh. Daddy? Well, he, from no. our conversation, you're somewhat of a father. Uh, yeah, so I'm the second oldest of 12 kids. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, really, when I read the question, I was like, it's bold of you to assume that I could take care of one with two legs. Uh, <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> so when you're getting ready on the diaper channel, it's like, actually, funny story, I've changed thousands of diapers. Yeah. <laughs> Man. So, oh, yeah, like and you're fine. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Um, what keeps you going on your low days? What do you got, Anthony? Uh, I am just incredibly good at taking negatives and switching them into positives. It's something I practice every single day. Mm -hmm. I've been doing it since long before I lost my leg. Uh, it's a lesson I learned from my father. He passed away from ALS and it was really hard. Six years of just fading away physically. Mm -hmm. uh, and he never complained once. His whole experience, he never moaned or cried or made his problem anyone else's problem. And so I have just ingrained that in myself. Uh, so I just, I don't do like man. Negative. Your brain I, listens I'm, to what you say, oh, yeah. right? And 100%. neural plasticity and like the acts of gratitude and the thoughts of gratitude and positivity, mm. it literally changes the wiring of your brain. Like there's science to it. So he was onto something, and yeah. that's really that's the only difference in the way that my journey went from suffering to thriving. It wasn't because my circumstances changed. In fact, in some ways, it's gotten more complicated and progressive in terms of my legs. It's because of the way that I view mm. my circumstances. Attitude of gratitude. Yeah. But it's yeah. so true. Yeah. Yeah. What do you got, Sam? Um, I kind of view it part of, part objective and a little bit subjective is that simply good days, bad days, and normal days are all based on averages. So that means that only one third of my days can be good days. Only and a third of my days are going to be normal, which and a third of my days have to be bad days. That's just how it works. Um, so understanding it's coming. I have a one in three shot at minimum that today's going to be a low day. So one, it doesn't matter. Mm. Two, I, I know what I'm working for. I know what I'm working towards. And again, it's about strategy. Um, same as living life like this. And then it's, uh, my buddy Hanse has got this little thing that he started saying, and I've just really, he's like, he's like, man, he's like, ever, he's like, my highs are high, my lows are high. I'm good with it. Oh, yeah, I love that's that. How I live. Love that. I don't have a ton to add except that um, when you look up the actual cycle of grieving, you know, when you get to acceptance, it doesn't just stay there. You've got things and triggers and dates and things mm -hmm. that remind you of challenges or flashbacks if people have PTSD and things like that. So you're inevitably going to have a thing mentally that you face even after you come to acceptance. I'm wildly there, but like there's these things, you know, spring's coming, people are out running with their baby strollers. You know, I can't really do that well um, and without a lot of challenge and, and suffering after the fact in terms of my condition. So you look and you you know, you, you just have that moment, you pause and you go, yeah, you know, this is different, but the blessings that come from it, right? You remind yourself of those silver linings. And when you look at the stages of grieving and you see where things fall, acceptance is this high peak physically. When you look down at the, the dip that's lower than the place of acceptance, it's depression, right? It's That's one of the stages of your grieving. And 
the next stop from it, literally, on the stages of grieving is back to acceptance. So when people are processing a brand new trauma from the start, the stages of grieving lead to a place of depression, which actually is the starting place before it starts to uptrend into acceptance. So just remembering that you're on the slope up, um, sometimes just knowing that makes the blow a little bit less. Mm. I think you're up. All right, what do we got? How long until life as as an amputee felt normal? Ooh, normal. What is normal? Normal, yeah, what is that? Uh, you don't think about it. No. How long until, I don't know. Because it is I, your normal, you that's, know? Uh, yeah. yeah, immediately. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I just kind of tried to accept it right away and it became my new normal. That's really all I have for that. I don't yeah. know if you guys can speak to that one. I don't want to be normal anymore. Yeah. Like a normal is a, a, a term that I don't even know that I have a definition for anymore. It's what your state of knowledge of yourself yeah. is at that time. It's, it's, it's you. Like, I was talking yeah. about what the average is. Like, yeah, like for me, that's just like when it went, like, because at first, like when you first have your amputation, like everything is centered around the fact you have an amputation. Everything's protective. Everything's learning. But there will, but there came like, there, for me, like there came a point where like the turnover started to be like, there just became a day where I just woke up and put my leg on. Now it's normal. Yeah. And like getting through that one. Yeah. And I'm going to be honest, that was probably, I mean, I would say it's probably the better part of six months. I mean, before I truly like, it wasn't a production anymore to, to figure out yeah. life because, you know, I wasn't having to be intentional yeah. or as intentional, like do this, do this, do this. It became just, it just became a part of the flow. It had integrated, it had fully integrated and immersed itself as a part of my life experience. For people that are ongoing with surgeries and pain and they are got upcoming doctor's appointments, you know, it can get a little bit more mucky at that point because your, your normal, your new normal is constantly changing and yes. you don't really see light at the end of the tunnel. I went through 13 surgeries. I had 18 months. I couldn't walk on a prosthetic. So like for me, it took a couple of years until like dust settled a little for me to even recognize what normal would be. But it's different for every person. And I think that's the big take home too that I want to share with people. I was told when you get your leg amputated, expect that you'll be in a prosthetic in three months. And I was devastated that it took 18 mm. because everybody's mm -hmm. different. So don't put yourself on any timeline. Recognize that normal is totally related to you and that will lead to a little bit less um, disappointment. Guys, I can't believe that this time flew by so quickly. Wow. I know you guys have <laughs> more questions. <laughs> I know I know you want to hear more. So what I would love to hear is what you guys want to ask us or other amputees in the comments or send us a DM if you don't want it out there and then we will answer it, whether it's here or remote in the next couple of days. Don't forget when you leave to put your best foot forward and check out what Less Like More Heart, Levitate, Anthony Capaletti and Sam Schaefer are up to because big things in the future.